Aloha, welcome back to Aina Bear Farm. Thought I'd do a little social distancing garden update. Um, so I do have a full-time job that uh, keeps me from farming full-time. Farming is kind of an evening and weekends deal for me, but I'm a teacher, so I have the summers off, spring break, whatnot. Uh, this is my spring break. However, um, I would be practicing social distancing even if that was not going on right now. I'm spending most of my time working on my garden or our conversion of our pasture to a food forest. If you haven't seen any of those videos, check those out. I'll do an update on, on the uh, food forest soon. But this is our, our market garden, kitchen garden, where we grow a lot of kind of our vegetable staples, a mix of perennial and annuals in here. And I thought I'd do a little video to, for one, give an update, but also just to talk about some different foods that you can grow easily and quickly if you're, if this kind of recent situation has made you think about um, creating a little bit more of your own food for your own sustenance, for your own sustainability, and... Um, yeah, and just security, I guess. Um, obviously, this is not enough food uh, to feed even an entire person, singularly. But it's really nice to have these fresh nutrients at your fingertips, save you a little money, save you the trip of going to the grocery stores, which no matter where you are, are probably pretty crazy right now, and maybe even facing empty shelves. So this is a really nice thing to have. And like I said, I have a full-time job. This is just even an evening and weekend thing. And I'm able to do quite a bit. So obviously if you're on the mainland on the continent, um, the garden is nowhere near as far along as we are here in most places. But um, I'll talk a little bit more broadly about what you can do in a lot of different places. Um, if you don't know, I moved to the Big Island from Maryland, so definitely akin to a much different set of growing seasons. Uh, this is our north-facing slope out towards the ocean on the windward side, so excuse the wind noise today if it gets a little bit loud. We are trying to do some things to block the wind for our garden. These are Song of India plants, which are very tiny right now, but once they get established, they will really bush out nicely create a very tall hedge that's very thick and keep the wind from blowing directly into the garden. So far, like you can see the corn over there is mostly standing up, which is kind of surprising. We'll, we'll get 50, 60 mile an hour gusts through here on a fairly regular basis. And um, so far so good, but those red tea leaves along the fence are mostly a barrier to fortify the fence against pigs. But as they branch out and a little bigger they will provide a little bit of extra wind buffer as well. We have two banana circles down here which obviously we're trying to grow bananas but in addition they'll provide some wind barrier as well. We're going to put a third banana circle horseshoe shape here in the middle so that we'll have that kind of triangulated sun coming in from this side in the winter. Should get plenty of sun aspect to continue producing full fruit. And this is a banana circle technique really popular in the tropics where you dig out um, the ground a few, few feet down, fill it up with food scraps, um, plant scraps, see some palm fronds in there, some toilet paper rolls, all kinds of stuff just feeds the plants. Bananas are super hungry plants. And these are a dwarf orange banana variety. I cannot remember the exact name, maybe Cuban orange. Very popular here for uh, farmers in Hawaii. You don't see them much in the markets. And this is the dwarf apple banana, probably the most popular banana in Hawaii. It's a smaller, much more flavorful, tangy banana than the, the typical larger size that you um, get in most grocery stores. And that one is growing some little keiki, which is what we call the, the pups here. Keiki is Hawaiian for children. So you can see a little there and a little one here. So we'll take those out in a little while and replant them. Uh, up slope from there we've got dwarf coconut, Malayan coconut trees. 
So they stay at around six, seven feet, the fruit, for the first 10 years or so. So they're very easy, easy to harvest in a couple of papaya circles up the hill. We only have one papaya that has really grown like I expected them to, and that's because this area got a lot more shade in the winter than I thought it would. So most of them are just tiny little seedlings sprouting now. But hopefully we'll get some papaya off that one. Maybe it's hermaphroditic so that it can pollinate itself. And we do have another little guy next to it. We'll see what happens there. As we come back into the garden, you can see our white pineapple down here on the end. Next to some yellow pineapple. These are all either store-bought or farmer's market bought where we just took the tops and replanted them. If you didn't know, you can do that in a warm area next to some green onions. So that's a really nice couple of things there, just super easy. The onions just keep coming, 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 barely do anything to them. Finally scored some strawberries. These are an ever-bearing strawberry variety. We're picking the berries off right now so that we can get some runners and really spread those out to fill this whole bed. These beds are about four feet wide. So I'm gonna spread out across the entire bed. See, nasturtium does really well here. It's almost like a weed. It just keeps going, going, going. We've got some volunteer squash. I believe that's kabocha. So we'll let that go, even though we've got a lot of kabocha in the food forest. And uh, we've got some new asparagus plants that we just put in three-year rootstock. These are same three-year rootstock that we put in in the fall that are now, you can see, sending up some pretty good-sized shoots. There's another one there. So I think we'll probably anticipate letting these go through the summer without harvesting, and then next year we'll probably be able to harvest off of them. We'll see how it goes. But uh, asparagus is just such a great perennial vegetable. On our last farm, I didn't plant them for so long because I kept thinking, oh, I don't want to wait several years. And then every year I'd think to myself, man, I should have planted them two or three years ago and I'd be eating them by now. So I recommend getting these in the ground as soon as you can. You need quite a few plants to feed a small family. You know, if you've got a family of four like we do, um, I would say really probably 12 plants is a minimum. As you figure during max harvest, you're probably going to come out here and break off, you know, one or two of these from each little plant. And, you know, so if you're getting 12 to 24 spears every time you harvest, that's easily eaten by a family of four. So they take up a little bit of space, but they don't really need much care once you get them established. Kind of just forget about them. Down here we put in some green beans. That is a really nice quick crop. So if you're thinking about just putting a little garden bed together and you're know, thinking about what are some good staple things to grow, I think green bean is definitely a good one. These are bush bean variety, meaning that they don't climb and climb and climb. Bush beans are great because they produce their beans much sooner. 45 to 60 days is what I expect from these. And Whereas the climbing beans can take, oh man, twice that. And um, just depends, like if there are climbing beans where you really like the variety, maybe you go for those. But otherwise, bush beans are just great. And the faster that something goes to harvest, in my mind, is the less amount of time that it's in the ground for pests to attack it. <laughs> so if you can get a harvest before the pests come and ruin everything, that's always <laughs> in your best interest if you know you're organic like us and so a lot of these beds you know you can see like several kind of weedy things this stuff is um i think it's a good type of perennial peanut it's a nitrogen fixer good ground cover so i let that go then we bury compost in here so you see things like this, this is a longan plant longan is a really tasty tropical fruit so at some point i'll probably dig that up and transplant it elsewhere but i'll just let it get some good roots on it first and really nothing else annual that we're cycling through this bed at the moment. We did finally put in, let's see, I'm gonna pan back a little bit, a few um, tomatoes. These are just a cherry tomato that was volunteer and I just scooched it over here to this locale. 
tomatoes are notoriously hard to grow here. Um, the cutting, you know, sizable tomatoes because of fruit flies, but the cherry tomatoes do pretty well. So it'd be nice to have a few of those. Did pretty well with the carrots. We're coming into our hotter season now. And so we'll be harvesting a lot of these. Well, we've been harvesting them already, but we'll just continue and cycle them out. Probably not plant carrots again until the fall. But if you're on the mainland, pretty much anywhere right now is a good time to plant carrots. Take a long time to germinate, anywhere from one to two weeks. I recommend leaving them covered with like some cardboard or something if you're gonna germinate them. But um, that's a good one to grow fresh. You know, they do take a little while. Not the easiest thing to grow. And they're relatively cheap if you can get them, the supply of them okay in the supermarket. But, um, if not, then definitely a good thing to grow. Sweet potato right next to that, super easy. If, unless you absolutely hate sweet potato, I would get some of these in the ground as soon as possible. Um, the ground needs to be fairly warm to put these in, so most places on the mainland you still probably have a couple weeks to, to where the ground will be ready to start these. But you can start them from just little pieces of the... Um, the vine if you get a hold of that or go to the grocery store what i always did when i was on the mainland go to the grocery store buy a few sweet potatoes cut the ends off of them stick the ends in some pots in a sunny window uh, not direct sun but a light uh, a window with a lot of light and just kind of keep them moist and they'll send up these vines once you have the vines they'll put little roots off of them just stick them in the ground let them go They'll grow all through the summer and you'll be able to dig up a ton of sweet potatoes in the fall. These store pretty well too. So that's another thing, like if you're looking for, you know, just a little bit more self-reliance, um, then things that store really well are gonna be in your interest uh, as well as things that are quick and easy to grow. More green beans down here. I like to mix things. So we've got green beans mixed with some kale and these flowering plants are sun hemp if you haven't seen any of our other garden videos that's a nitrogen fixer changes things up a little bit a lot of our lettuce has bolted so you can see flowers come in here from the aster family so the lettuce actually makes pretty nice flowers so we'll just collect the seeds off of that and then probably move some of our lettuce to a shadier spot for now a lot of kale we kale in our smoothies. Um, if you're in a room or maybe other tropical spots and you have a problem with rat lungworm like we do here, one way we get around that with our kale and our smoothies is we pick the leaves every other day and we freeze them for 48 hours. And then after they've been frozen for 48 hours, the rat, any rat lungworm is dead. All the nutrients are preserved. You just throw it in your shake since it's going to be, you know, blended up in the shake anyways. It doesn't make much difference taste-wise. So that's been a good trick for us. Avoid getting sick from rat, rat lungworm, but also still able to get our raw kale. I'm not a big fan of cooked kale. Uh, down here, mixed with okra, we've got pigeon pea. Super great um, protein. Um, it is just kind of like a nice dry bean, essentially. Nitrogen fixer, grows pretty quick, pretty fast. This does not, is not commonly grown on the mainland. And I'm not actually sure why. I don't know if it's because it needs a little bit of a longer growing season to fully produce. I mean, here it'll get woody and it'll just keep making more and more beans as sort of a woodier bush, but obviously you don't necessarily need that. And maybe it's just that there's so many beans you can grow that are faster than that, that nobody bothers to grow these on the mainland. Um, but they're a great plant here, very popular. And this is something, if you're in the tropics, you're in Hawaii, this is a great self-sustenance plant because you know number one you can grow one plant and get your seed stock for the next round and just constantly be succession planting these you can stick them anywhere they fix their own nitrogen so they don't need a lot of babying the good looking plants they have pretty flowers um you know it's just 
they, they enrich the soil. Just a great plant all around. And here's our corn, which is doing really well. Wasn't sure what to expect with the corn. Still not sure if the wind's gonna take it out or not. <laughs> so it's getting pretty tall. We'll see, hang on corn. But as you can see, it's starting to send out its little pollen frond at the top. And then the ears of corn are starting to grow sides. So hopefully they'll stay upright. Looks like we did lose one down there. Hopefully they'll stay upright long enough for us to get some good sweet corn. Um, lettuce is tough here. Here we've got some romaine that's starting to head up, which is good. Some red leaf. Uh, lettuce will bolt pretty quick here because it's such strong sun even in the winter. But ultimately the problem with lettuce here is the slugs. And this goes back to the rat lungworm. And, um, you know, there's really no such thing as cooked lettuce. Um, frozen lettuce, haven't tried that. But um, So we'll probably end up shifting to a system of growing our lettuce in a box that I can more or less slug proof. Because it's just not worth risking that. It can be pretty nasty. It's rare, but again, just not worth it. And if you're in the tropics, you absolutely should be growing Moringa. It's one of the first things I would plant. We call it the miracle tree. If you don't know about Moringa, do a little research. Nitrogen fixing, you can eat all the parts of it. Um, it's got more nutrients than almost any other plant on the planet. It's just amazing. So that's our garden update um, with a few kind of recommendations as to things that are good for self-reliance and sustainability. So if you're getting out there and getting a garden going, whether you're on the mainland or in the tropics, um, good luck to you. Come back and visit us, throw some comments down if you have any questions or other suggestions of really easy, quick growing things that, that you've tried, that we should try here. And um, otherwise, I appreciate you watching as usual and look forward to seeing you again. We'll do a pasture to food forest update here soon so you can see all the progress we're making out there with our social distancing time. All right, stay safe, stay healthy, stay sane. We'll see you here again at Ina Bear Farm. Aloha.